Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Today we're going to be talking about a small game loadout for your air gun hunting adventure. So, stick around. A while ago I was thinking, man, it has been a long time since I posted a video about my small game hunting loadout for air guns. So, I started looking back through the archives to see and I was surprised that it was 2013 was the last time that I actually posted a loadout video. A lot has changed in the nine years that I've been air gun hunting. What I carry, the items that I carry, how I carry them, and such. Now, things are going to vary a little bit based on your geographic location. You have to understand that going out of the box. I'm in a mostly arid, sometimes high alpine environment. It's a lot different than, say, the Pacific Northwest. I was recently up in Oregon. The topography is really drastically different than down here. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I broke my kit down. I put it here on the table. I'm going to spin the camera around. I'm going to show you each piece of kit. I'm going to talk about it. And then we'll come back for some final thoughts. And as always, folks, I love doing videos like this. The video starts now. No air gun loadout video would be complete without showing you at least a little bit of eye candy. One air gun in particular. Now, this is a new air gun here on the channel. The good folks over at Air Guns of Arizona sent this to me. I'll be doing some hard use, real world testing on this air gun so look for this in some hunting videos coming soon this is a 22 caliber it is a carbine slash pistol there's a lot of great videos out there my good friend dana from mountain sport air guns actually ran this air gun through the uh, air gun survival challenge on his channel i'll leave a link to that video down below and this air gun took a beating and still came back and worked after an extreme hard use test. So we have one here on the channel. We're gonna showcase it in upcoming videos. Look out for that. I'm running a Hawk Vantage Scope. This is a three by 12. Nice setup on this. I run this on a couple different air guns. I also have it on my uh, Benjamin Akela. Works really nice for me. Also works really good when I'm using the uh, Tacticam system, and we'll be showing that as well. But uh, just a nice rig, good backpack gun, easy to carry. Also, I have it configured where I can run a two-point sling on that, especially when you're going through the brush. You want to keep your air gun close to you, keep debris out of it, keep it from hooking stuff, and it's just a nice setup. This is the Tacticam FTS system. Basically, this apparatus right here mounts onto the eyepiece of the scope. This is the camera, also mounts onto the FTS system. And with mirrors, you're able to see through the scope perfectly without too much of an increase in the eye relief. It's a great system. I used this system to film my coyote hunt. If you follow along on the channel, um, probably about, I wanna say a year and a half, two years ago, I was able to harvest a coyote with an air gun. And I'll also leave a video link in the description below if you wanna see that. Next up is in the concealment department. This is just some, uh, basically a sniper webbing that I bought at a local Army Navy store. I mean, you can see right through it, but what's good about it is you can post up somewhere, sit down, especially if you're coyote hunting, and be able to make yourself a quick blind. And it weighs next to nothing. It's basically a um, four by six panel, and it works really good for out here. The desert camo works really nice. I've used this on multiple hunts with success. Also ground squirrel hunting, the California ground squirrels, one, they see color and their eyesight is just amazing. They can see movement. So this helps uh, break you up when you're sitting down, trying to stay concealed out of the way. Nice piece of kit. Next up, uh, cutting tool. 
my own knife design. The Work Tough Gear Mount Laguna, been in production now for a couple years, but everyone needs to carry a cutting tool with them. I designed this knife, took me about three years to design it, and I designed it primarily as a hunting and fishing knife and maybe a little bit of camp craft. It's made out of Boulder K110, 3 16ths, has a 90 degree spine, and just, I'm a little bit biased because I designed it, but just a nice piece of kit. Also, if you folks are wondering, ATAC Custom Kydex, gentleman out of uh, Palm Springs, makes these, has just about every sort of Kydex you can think of, even does custom logo stuff. So I'll leave a link also in the video description below on this sheath. Just a nice piece of kit right here. Next up is the Baco Laplander saw. And you're probably asking yourself, John, why do you carry a saw in your kit? Well, like I said with the sniper blind, there's times where there's trees are down. I need to set that blind up. I'm going to cut a branch on a down tree, get it out of the way so we have a nice clean field of view. And this works very well for that. It's light. I use the Hidden Woodsman system with that. And um, Malcolm over at the Hidden Woodsman makes these for your saws works really nice goes on my belt and it just stays out of the way i've been running this now for years and it just works great pellets well with this system i'm running 22 caliber jsb exact jumbo heavy diabolos these are great with that system i also use them in the akela works out really really nice also this is a pellet pouch but this is a unique one this is a Meisenheimer pellet pouch and they make them for air guns of Arizona I like them because it has that old-school coin purse opening and it stays shut and your pellets aren't falling out also has a very nice belt loop so that way you can fill your mags. If you have extra mags, I also put them in there as well. This is a nice piece of kit, and I say that on everything, but just the craftsmanship on this leather pellet pouch. This is heirloom quality. You'll be passing this down to your grandkids. It's just beautiful, and it's functional. No kit would be complete without a multi-tool seems like whenever I get out in the woods something always happens where I need a screwdriver I need a saw I need a file and the Leatherman Super Tool 300 probably one of the first things I've ever reviewed here on the channel so it's been around for a minute also I run a flashlight on there this is a Phoenix and this is the LD01. Gosh, they, I'm sure they don't even make this anymore. But uh, just a nice little flashlight. I always believe in redundancies. Two is one and one is none. And you can't go wrong with a Leatherman and a flashlight. Next up, eyes. You're going to be sitting in a blind. You're going to be out scouting. You can't be peeking through your scope all day or else it's just going to hurt your eyeballs. So I have a small Nikon Aculon. Had it for a while. And it's just small, compact. But it's really nice. It's a 10 by 25. They're camoed. And it just works. You don't need super high powered eyes for small game hunting if you're hunting elk big game and such then yeah you would need something because you're looking a long ways away but for ground squirrels out to 100 yards this works just fine also probably one of the most important pieces of kit for an air gunner is you need a range finder and this is a Vortex Ranger 1800. 
my relative Nick, my air gun guru here on the channel, gifted this to me for Christmas about two years ago. And let me tell you, this is a game changer. Next up, navigation. GPSs are nice, but also GPSs fail. So a good map and compass will always save the day if you are trained in the art of orienteering. Also, there's a lot of cool resources out there that if you're not in an area to learn, there's a lot of good stuff here on YouTube as far as using a map and compass. And uh, I highly suggest that you familiarize yourself with it. Too many times folks go out and they think they know the area, then something happens. And now there's a search and rescue operation that goes into effect because of that. Next up, my little right in the rain notebook. And I talked about this before on other videos, but when I get somewhere, I'll usually draw a crude map of the area and I'll also put the ranges in yardage so I know and I'll write down landmarks and such and then it's hard to read my cryptic writing here but got a road and you got uh, an open field and a ditch and then I'll write down the yardage based on the um, range finder but it makes it a lot easier when you're out hunting. That way you don't have to constantly range something. You can just look at your map real quick and then you know, hey, the large rock is 50 yards. The down tree is 75 yards. Just works really good. So just a nice piece of kit, the right in the rain notebooks. Use a pencil, I always carry a Sharpie just for those reasons. Combustion devices along with a cutting tool, it's definitely a necessity when you're going out, whether it's on a day hike or a small hunt. It always seems like the most innocent and benign adventures always wind up being some sort of rescue. Whether you're out there and weather kicks in or you fall down and have a mechanical injury, something like this may make the difference. So obviously, if you can, you want to use your lighter. But if the lighter fails, there's always redundancies, right? And this is another item from the Hidden Woodsman. And these are the storm-proof matches. These things, I've done videos on this where I put them in water and they still didn't go out. They're almost like a road flare and they work really well. Just an awesome backup piece of kit to have with you for those just-in-case moments. Another piece of kit that I carry, I always carry gloves with me for whatever reason. You just never know nowadays. And sometimes you're cleaning game. It's just nice, especially out here where there's a lack of water. It's nice to wear gloves. That way my cleanup is minimal. I also bring some uh, sanitizer for after. I bring some extra bags with me, carry out my trash. I also carry a small trash bag. This is a 13 gallon. So if I'm in the field and I'm not able to clean the game right away, I can put it in this bag, tie it up. That way if there's any ticks, fleas, whatever, they're not crawling all around the inside of my pack. I can secure this, keeps it nice and handy. Also, if I'm out in the field and I'm quartering up that jackrabbit, that cottontail, I can put them in a bag real quick. That way when I get back to camp, I just put it in a cooler. And it just makes it really nice uh, setup. The cleanup's minimal. And this is usually overlooked by a lot of people. We go out on hunts and nobody has anything even to clean their hands with. So I always like to have a little bit of something in my kit just for that reason. Next up, a basic first aid kit. Now, I've done videos on blowout kits. I've done videos on like major first aid kits for some serious wounds. I'm just talking about a light travel kit. We're out there just for cuts and scrapes. Then I have my base camp kit that I keep in my truck. 
are in camp in the event that there is a serious issue. But in the field, I don't need like a full triage kit with me. Band-Aids, some cleaner, some gloves, some gauze, and then hopefully that'll patch you up till we can get back to camp, maybe get you to the hospital, get uh, sutured up, set that bone, whatever it may be. But this is another overlooked item. And we're talking, usually they're like 10 or 12 bucks at a Walmart or at a big box retailer. So check it out. It's always good to have something like this on you all the time. Now, depending on the hunt, I'll use one or both. If it's ground squirrels, jackrabbits, cottontails, and the flies are bad, then yeah, I'm using something with at least 25% DEET in it just to keep the moseys off you. One, just for comfort reasons. If I'm on a coyote hunt, I usually don't spray myself with anything that has a scent on it. I'll usually spray all my clothes with uh, the scent killer. I normally don't wash my clothes with anything that is phosphorus or um, that is a scented uh, detergent. I know nowadays it seems like everything's scented, but um, there's still stuff out there where you can clean your clothes and it's scent free. I like doing that on the coyote hunts because if they get a whiff of you, they're gone. So this is always good to have in your kit. Next up is a First Light Phantom 3D jacket. Now, as you can see, this has like the see-through material and then it has the breakup or like leaves. Now, I'll use this on jackrabbit hunts. You've probably seen this in a couple of videos, especially when I'm uh, doing traditional archery. I'll use this, just something to break up the silhouette. Also, uh, you can purchase a back clava with that. And I find that it works really well, especially if you sit down, you just don't move. Now, you don't need to go out and buy fancy gear. Fred Bear, the uh, archery godfather that founded Bear Archery said the best camo is just to sit down, shut up and don't move. And that is the best. But uh, sometimes you need just a little bit more and this works pretty good. Also, I run some different baklavas. Uh, this is one that I had bought, I think from uh, eBay for paintballing and then uh, Shelta hats. I have a couple different variants of that. Shelta hats, great supporter of the channel. I've been wearing their stuff for a long time now. I use a lot of their stuff on my jet ski, but this stuff works also really well out in the field for just breaking up that pattern. And then last but not least, some gloves. Sometimes you can be camoed out and then you're not wearing gloves and an animal sees the back of your hand or your palms and then all of a sudden they're gone. So just some cheap mechanics gloves. They make them in a variety of different camo patterns. And uh, these work really good for me for uh, air gunning. Last but certainly not least, the Camelback Linchpin. Gosh, I've run this rig for probably almost the whole time I've had this channel. And I mean, it's seen some, uh, some times, but it's held up. It has that mystery ranch harness system, and that works really well. And you can custom fit this pack ergonomically to you. And uh, when you put a load in there, that's, that's when it really matters. But uh, sometimes I run a camelback bladder, sometimes I don't. I've been lately running just water bottles. Seems to be working really good for me. But I also have a video on this pack. I'll leave it in the uh, video description down below. Just a lot of different areas to carry gear on here. And also my mascot, Bigfoot, he comes along with me everywhere we go on all our adventures so that is a quick rundown of my small game hunting kit 
Now for some final thoughts on my air gun small game hunting loadout kit. First off, some of the items are seasonal. They're going to come in, going to come out. I didn't put snake gators in there. They're important for down here where I hunt, especially this time of year. My relative Nick, my air gun guru, he's been featured on the channel multiple times, turned me on to uh, wearing snake gators, especially when you're by yourself. The last thing you want to do is get bit, then all of a sudden it becomes a emergency situation. So the snake gators are definitely a check in the plus column. Also, shooting sticks. Now, I didn't show any in this video because I haven't found a pair of shooting sticks that were really worth showcasing. Everything that I've always purchased in the past have just never held up. They'll run a couple hunts, then all of a sudden the tubing on the sticks will break or they're uh, not stable or there's something always that happens to them. And a lot of them, frankly, are just junk. So if you folks out there know of a good pair of shooting sticks, that would work great for small game hunting, ground squirrels, jackrabbits, and such. Please leave a comment down below. I'll check it out. If they look good, I'll purchase them and I'll test them out here on the channel. I'm really looking forward, now that I got my kit ready to go, to get this Brocock Atomic out there. I want to thank the folks over at Air Guns of Arizona for sending this out to me. We're going to be doing some real world hunting, testing with this air gun and I just look forward to sharing it with you. So folks, it's a wrap. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Now get out there and hunt folks.